welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Over the years on this channel, I've made lots of videos about desktop operating systems. Indeed, if we look on the website, we can see I've made 22 videos about Windows, 37 videos about Linux, and 7 videos about other alternative operating systems. But you cry, which of these desktop OS do I use myself? Well, right now there are 5 that I boot up pretty much every day, as well as 2 others I usually run at least once a week. And so I thought I'd make a video about what these operating systems are and why I'm running them, although I want to stress right from the start I'm in no way suggesting that other people should do as I do. But with that point made, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here I am at my desk where the first operating system I boot up every morning is this one, Linux Mint. And I run Linux Mint on a silent Mini ITX N100 PC and using a 19 inch 54 monitor as this is the size and ratio I much prefer. Although in this video we're going to run everything 169. There we go. I use Linux Mint for all of my desk based online activities, and this includes writing in Google Docs, I do a great deal of that. It includes email, social media, and almost all of my YouTube uploading and channel management. When it comes to local software, I run GIMP, I run LibreOffice, I run Veracrypt, Etcher, FileZilla, and of course I run Solitaire. Very important to be running Solitaire. As some of you may have noticed if you're looking very closely here at Linux Mint, I'm actually running on this machine Linux Mint 20.3 although I will upgrade to Linux Mint 22 before April 2025 when support for Linux Mint 20 comes to an end. And in general, I only move to a new version of an operating system on a computer on which I rely for work purposes when I absolutely have to. This said, I also have Linux Mint permanently installed on the test rig in my studio space. So let's visit there. Here we are. And here I'm running the latest Linux Mint 22, as I frequently use in video making. And here the hardware is an i5-10400 with 16GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. Next, here we are on my long-suffering ZenBook i5-7200U laptop running Windows 10. I frequently work on this system at home in an armchair, in bed, and when travelling, and I used to use it a great deal to make client presentations. Windows 10 was the pre-installed operating system when I first purchased this machine back in February 2018, and I kept it because I needed to run an up-to-date version of Microsoft Office for client work. These days I mainly boot up a laptop to access email for YouTube channel management, and to run Google Docs and other cloud applications. But as you can see if we go back to the desktop, I have got quite a lot of local software pre-installed, and when away from home I have on several occasions in the past 18 months edited Explaining Computers videos here in Windows 10 using Caden Live. Oh, and finally I also run Windows 10 on a Surface 6 tablet, which has this rather wacky desktop background. Right, here I am back at my desk where for 8, 10, 12 or sometimes more hours a day you'll find me running this operating system which is Windows 7. This I run on the tower PC under my desk which is an i7-6700T with 32GB of RAM and lots of storage. And since January 2020, I've been running this system offline for almost all of my video production and 3D graphics work. I still run Windows 7 because it's possible to configure it to provide a very, very clear and sharp text display with every interface element under user control in a manner that's not been possible since Windows 8. 
In my view, nothing of value has been added to the Windows interface since version 7, with the only missing feature being native NVMe SSD support, and this can be easily installed. Here on this system, as you can see, I run a variety of Adobe software. Specifically, I'm running Adobe Premiere for video editing. This is Adobe Premiere CS5, one of the last versions you could purchase outright from Adobe rather than renting via their Creative Cloud. And I also use Adobe After Effects over here for compositing and Adobe Photoshop for graphics. And then in addition, I run other Adobe software. Let's just uh, push those down like that. And these include Encore, Illustrator, and Audition. And I also run a version of DaVinci Resolve and the Lightwave 3D modeling and rendering package. And in fact, I've got Lightwave running over here. There it is. I use Lightwave for my 3D graphics work. Overall, the setup here is a totally locked down offline working tool where there is no possibility of disruption from email or social media and no temptation to seek these out. I won't be able to run this system forever, but until some hardware fails and cannot be replaced, I'm going to continue to enjoy running Windows 7. Greetings! At number four on my list, we have a desktop operating system that I use when I'm leaning back in my chair like this in the evenings. I operate it using a wireless keyboard and a trackpad thing like this, as you can see. And I have this on my lap on a cushion, very comfortable. And the hardware I'm running this operating system on is over there. No, it's over there. There it is, it's my television. Well, in fact, we're not running the operating system on the television, it's running on a silent Mini ITX J4105 PC plugged in to the television. And the operating system is Chrome OS Flex, which is a version of the Chrome OS operating system used on Google Chromebooks, which Google has made available for many desktop and laptop computers. And as you may guess, I use Chrome OS Flex here connected to my TV to watch a variety of uh, media content, streaming services like Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, BBC iPlayer. I also use it to watch YouTube. And guess what? I also use it to access Google Docs. It doesn't matter what computer I'm running, what operating system I'm running on it, I'm always accessing Google Docs. I've always got a Google Docs tab open. I often say, oh, I won't need one. I always do. I'm a writer, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a content creator. I'm always accessing Google Docs. And this is one of the reasons I like to use a computer connected to my television rather than a smart TV, because smart TVs aren't very good at accessing things like the Google Docs word processor. I also use this system to review my YouTube content before it is uploaded. So if we go to the file manager here, you will see I've got a folder here with all of my recent YouTube videos. We can run one up like that, full screen and play. And it's surprising how many times when I check a video back, lean back being watched on my television, I find an error I didn't see when I was watching it lean forward on a computer. So it's a useful check to Welcome actually to look at videos video. that way. Oh look, it's me on my television. Very, very strange, let's uh, get rid of that. And so there we are, this is Chrome OS Flex. I really like this operating system. You can set it up as I've shown in the video in the past to run Linux applications, although I don't need that functionality for this particular use case. But I do find in some respects, I enjoy using Chrome OS Flex more than any other desktop operating system. Greetings. Here we are back at my desk where we appear to be running Linux Mint. Well, we are running Linux Mint. But if I click on this icon, we will soon be running my fifth weekly used operating system, which is Windows XP. And I run Windows XP offline in a virtual machine on my silent M100 system, and I use it for almost all of my offline writing and administration, including contracts, other legal stuff, personal correspondence, and accounts. And because of this, I can't really show you anything specific I do here in Windows XP. Although the software I use is Microsoft Excel, there that is over there, and I also run Microsoft Word. You probably have guessed that, you saw it on my desktop. And as you can see, this is pre-ribbon Microsoft Office software. Can never remember exactly when it's from. Let's have a look at about, it is, uh, what, 2002. 
And as we saw earlier, I do have a recent ribbon-based version of Office running in Windows 10, but I much, much, much prefer using a screen-efficient menu-based version like I have here. It's just, it's just easier to use. I just prefer it massively. And for that reason, I generally work here offline in Windows XP for several hours a week. And because I'm running a virtual machine, I can easily go back to Linux Mint for online activities and then flick straight back to Windows XP. And because this copy of Windows XP is running in a virtual machine, I can easily back it up and run it on other computers. So, we now get to two desktop operating systems that I don't run every single day, but which are booted up at least once a week. And the first of these is this, Windows 11, which is the second operating system I have permanently installed on the i5-10400 test rig in my studio, the other being Linux Mint 22, as discussed earlier. Windows 11 running on this computer is the operating system that most frequently appears on the Explaining Computers YouTube channel, and is of course what Microsoft currently wants us all to run, even though it does not officially support its use on tens of millions of PCs and laptops. As you can see, I have Windows 11 configured with the start menu on the left, in my view, where it should be, although I'm still not remotely impressed with the menu functionality here in Windows 11. And I've also applied various hacks, as detailed in my video on Windows 11 configuration. So, for example, if we go to the File Manager and to a folder with a file in, and we right-click, we actually get a proper menu with all of the options available rather than just a few options and others available by another menu. And everything here is a menu option. We don't have some things as menu options, some things as icons. Personally, I'm really not a fan of some of the default user interface choices we get in Windows 11, although, as you can see, things can be improved with a bit of messing around. As you probably gathered, I run Windows 11 because I have to more than because I want to. I produce a YouTube channel on computing, so I've really got to run the latest Microsoft operating system. This said, I do sometimes edit a video in DaVinci Resolve here in Windows 11, which works uh, rather nicely. Let's just go uh, full screen. I do like DaVinci Resolve. It's a lovely uh, video editor, and it does work very nicely, I have to admit, in Windows 11. And something else I also do fairly regularly on this computer is rendering. I've got a program set up here called a Lightwave Screamernet. This is a command line utility for rendering lightwave 3D animation. And if I've got a lot of rendering to do, I spread it across lots of computers, including this hardware. And so sometimes I am running Windows 11 24 seven. Right, the last of the seven desktop operating systems I run weekly is this one, Ubuntu. And I can't tell you which hardware I always run this on because it varies all the time. I don't have a permanent installed on any particular machine, but I do run up Ubuntu a great deal. Here, for example, we're running it on the Hi5 Premier P550 RISC V development board, which I happen to have in my possession at the time I'm making this video. It's on loan from Sci5, it'll go back fairly soon. But I also run Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 5. I run it on a J4105 system. I sometimes run it on my i5 test system. It's just such a nice operating system for running all kinds of things, including Solitaire, and of course it does all the normal web stuff you would expect. And why do I end up running Ubuntu? Well, I guess it's because it's used as the default operating system on many single board computers. It is very stable, it's very reliable, it's a very dependable professional Linux distro, and it's therefore one of the less surprising entries on this list. And so there we are, the seven desktop operating systems that I run every week. Although I want to stress again, as I did at the start of the video, I'm not suggesting everybody else or anybody else should run what I run. We all have different computing requirements and different preferences, and inevitably I run quite a few operating systems because I run this computing YouTube channel. But what operating systems do you run? Please let us all know down in the comments section. 
But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh, <laughs>